It's reasonable if someone missed one prayer, two prayers, a day worth, to tell them, okay, go and make it up and don't make a habit of this. You've made a sin, make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. How about someone who comes to us, he's a Muslim, but he hasn't prayed for the past 15 years. This person, how do we handle him? Do we tell him, make up 15 years of prayer? Personally, I think this is not reasonable. I don't think this is reason. There are literally, as I said, majority of the scholars, there are shuyukh who give the fatwa that go and, and make up 15 years of prayer. I don't think that's reasonable because now you're trying to get this person to come back to Islam. You tell them, okay, unlike the average person, you have to do twice as much. You're going to turn a lot of people away from Islam. Especially because we have no conclusive evidence saying that all of those prayer need to be made up. That's why I say that, uh, and that's, it's very important that a person looks at the scenario as well when they're giving the fatwa. You have someone like this, they're coming back to Islam. It's, it's an asset for the, them to come back to Islam. And we know that there's a generality of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, At-tawbah tajubu ma qablaha. That tawbah, that uh, repentance ends up removing the sin of everything that is prior to it. And in this case, the prayer, the previous prayers being made up, there are some athar, there are some athar, there are some statements of the salaf to this effect as well. I'll give you a couple that Ibn Hazm quoted. Ibn Hazm he quoted that Ibn Ibn Umar radiAllahu taala anhu he saw a man he was reading he was reading a document. فَقَالَ لَهُ يَا هَذَا الْقَارِ he said to him, O reader, O reader, someone is sitting around reading something, but he got occupied from prayer because of that book he was reading. People used to get occupied from prayer because of books. Now it's the phones, right? So he saw him reading something and that made him busy from the prayer. So Ibn Umar told him he said that إِنَّهُ لَا صَلَاةَ لِمَنْ لَمْ يُصَلِّ الصَّلَاةَ لِوَقَتِهَا فَصَلِّ ثُمَّ قَرَأْ مَا بَدَالَكَ He said there is no prayer. Meaning there's no prayer accepted. There is no prayer for the person who doesn't pray on time. What does this mean? Ibn Umar is saying that there's no such thing as making up a prayer. You deliberately leave. And he said, so pray and then pick up the sahifa and read as much as you want. It's very similar to someone sitting on their sofa nowadays and using the phone and they're like, oh, there's a little bit of time left, a little bit of time, time completely exits and salah is finished. So Ibn Umar's athar would be applicable as well. Another one is that Umar ibn al-Khattab, as he was giving one of the sermons, he said that, أَلَا وَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ لَهَا وَقْتٌ شَرَطَهُ اللَّهُ لَا تَصْلُحُ إِلَّا بِهِ That there is a specific time that Allah has described for each prayer. This is a condition. Salah is not acceptable except within this time. All of this shows that if the salah has been deliberately kept or taken out of the time, then there is no way to make it up. Now I'm not saying this is the better opinion or that is the better opinion. I'm saying this is the reasonable thing to say to a person who comes to Islam after 5, 10, 15, 17 years of being away from Islam. You tell them make up all of those years, you're going to turn people away. And I've actually seen this as well. Sometimes people, they want to come back to Islam, but they say this is too much. You tell them, okay, no problem. Make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal and fix your ways from here on. And do as much good as you can because you've been very neglectful. You've been very neglectful. You can get them to become better people in this way.